This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Uh, here we are again. This is around Kansas, by the way, early in your morning on Wednesday. I'm Frank. She's Deb. She yes. still is. <laughs> <laughs> the frog story. I got a frog in my throat this morning. <laughs> so I got, I got to tell you a frog story. Okay. My friend Ed Kennedy, who's retired from the Command and General Staff College, um, we're out doing a staff ride, which is way cool. Tom Chichota, Ed Kennedy, and myself. We have 20 visiting French officers. So we're at Byram's Ford in Kansas City doing the Battle of the Blue. And this is, oh my God, it was so cool. So much fun. And it's... Um, early April, and it was the first nice day, warm day in a long time, and we're standing down at Byram's Ford along the creek there in Swope Park, near Swope Park, and Ed, all of a sudden, he's lecturing to these French guys, and he said, oh, I think I hear a frog, and all the French guys are like, really? You know, really? <laughs> and of course, oh, yeah. a frog is a rather derogatory <laughs> term for a Frenchman. And Ed was just to hearing tree frogs for the first time in the spring. <laughs> and it took him a couple of minutes for it to sink in that he had just insulted 20 French officers. <laughs> this is how international incidents happen, people. This is, this is how it happens. But, so I was out in western Kansas last year. It was my first spring out there. And I'm out one night and with our friends, and I said, oh, I hear tree frogs. We don't have tree frogs. We don't have trees. How can we have tree frogs? <laughs> but, Frank, apparently we do have tree frogs, don't we? I, well, yes, 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 yes. Uh, the, the story I get to do now is about frogs, and I learned a lot. <laughs> and hopefully you will learn a lot about frogs, more than you ever wanted to know, <laughs> most probably. And toads. <laughs> A sure sign of spring is not only the song of the birds, but the cacophony of frogs. For a tutorial on frog sounds, we turn to the Kansas School Naturalist, published by Emporia State and edited by Robert F. Clark. One of the times that we are aware of the presence of frogs and toads is when they're vocalizing. Sometimes these sounds are referred to as songs, but many hardly rate that title for they are merely grunts or chirps or screams. The term calls is also applied and is better for it implies that the individual making the sound is calling to another individual and that this is the case most of the time. Only males call, gathering other males and females together into a breeding congress when conditions are appropriate. Often, large numbers of individuals are calling at the same time from the same general area, and the result of this chorus can be a terrific din, particularly in southern swamps when a number of different species are at the same breeding site. Whereas most vocalizations are made to attract mates, calls may be stimulated by changes in humidity, declaration of territory, fright screams, or sometimes apparently just because they feel like it. The sound is made by air shuffled back and forth over vocal cords between the mouth cavity and lungs. Lowering and raising the floor of the mouth cavity with the mouth nostrils closed accomplishes this. In most cases, the sound is amplified by a resonating chamber known as the vocal sac. There may be a single external sac which swells under the chin and is sometimes quite prominent, as in bufo toads or a single internal sac, as in the bullfrog, or in a double internal sac, as in the leopard frog. Calls of the various species are different from one another, and it is easy to learn to recognize the identity of the caller. One that should be familiar to most is the jug of rum of the bullfrog, heard in late spring and summer. When the mid-March rain fills ditches, the chorus frog begins. It sounds is a series of notes ascending the scale, someone like the sound you get by running a fingernail along the points of the teeth of a comb. At this time, that chorus frogs are calling, the leopard frogs also begin. The call is not very loud and is said to resemble the low clucking of a hen or fingers dragged across a blown-up balloon. Cricket frogs got their common name from the cricket-like chick-chick-chick sound they produce almost constantly. Along the edge of creeks, ponds, and lakes, spring peepers have a single high-pitched peep 
Tree frogs, a short, loud trill. Green frogs sound like the plucking of seven, the low string of a banjo. Woodhouse's toad has a startling scream. The narrow-mouthed toad sounds like a muffled door buzzer. And the American toad has a beautiful high-pitched trill that may last for 30 seconds. Although most of the mating call choruses are conducted at night, a considerable amount is heard during the daytime at the height of the season, especially after rains. Other types of calls may be heard at any time. To learn more, check out the Kansas School Naturalist, which is free to those interested in nature education. Hey folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Have you asked yourself how can I help provide relief to wildfire victims? Well, you can go to the Ashland Community Foundation or you can go to the Kansas Livestock Association Foundation and make monetary gifts. Another way, you can buy this beautiful print that was painted by Dr. Eva Gardner of the Gardner Angus Ranch of Ashland and Clark County area before the fire. This painting will be sold through the Kansas Livestock Association Foundation and all proceeds will be provided to victims of the wildfire.